Alright guys, welcome back to part 2 of our tutorial series on UI refresh controls. Uh, just a quick overview of everything we've done so far. So uh, starting with our storyboard, we swapped out our UI view controller for a UI table view controller. Uh, we then came into our uh, view controller header file and implemented some properties, um, also some methods here. And then um, we actually implemented these methods, um, the biggest one being our refresh view where we essentially set some uh, values for that refresh view and then also set some messages that the user would see when the uh, refresh view was sort of pulled down out. Uh, we also set up our data retrieval methods which is what we're doing here and uh, we just have a few more items that we need to wrap up before we can uh, complete this tutorial. Uh, so our next step is going to be our view did load method. First of course we want to load the data so we need to make a call so that some data gets loaded and the way we would do that is we just say self load data so all we have to do is or sorry data load I think is what I call that method that's nice all right start okay start all right so that loads up the data for us next we also want to set up our UI refresh control so we would do that by saying UI refresh control Let's just call it refresh. We do an alloc and init on it. Then let's set up a set its attributed title property. Refresh dot attributed title. And that is going to need to be set to a ns attributed string. Again, this is very similar to what we did uh, a little while ago in uh, that method that we're going to call. Uh, so this is going to be init with string and we are going to set the string to something uh, like pull to refresh so it's obvious to our users what needs to happen. Uh, then we also want to add a target so we're going to say refresh add target and we are going to set the target as self. The action is going to essentially be a selector so we're going to say when this is pulled down out, we want you to go fire this particular method. So remember we set up our refresh view method, that's exactly what we need. And then for control events is going to be UI control event value changed. So event value changed, okay. With that done, we then want to set our self.refresh control, because this is a table view controller, uh, to refresh. And then uh, maybe let's go ahead and set our title. And this is just the title for our, our view controller, our table UI table view controller. We're going to set this to context. Okay, with that done, we still have to, of course, implement our data source and delegate methods. Now, if you've never worked with table view before, uh, that's something that you will need to review. I've got a couple of tutorials on my channel that cover that, so you may want to take a look at those. For now, I'm going to sort of do it the quick way. I have a uh, Xcode snippet. Again, if you've never worked with snippets, take a look at my video on that. I guarantee it'll speed up your development process. I can just hit TTT and that automatically adds for me the data source and delegate methods that you normally would use within a table view. And because we use table views so much, these are one of the most handiest things you want to add to your snippet collection. So looking at the data source methods, uh, really it's only the data source methods that we're concerned about in this particular case. You'll notice that there's a method called number of sections in table view. That's returning one and that is indeed what we want. We're just going to do one section. There's also a method called table view number of rows in section, which is currently returning 10. And that's not quite what we want because what we want to set this to is actually our contacts list dot count. So we want to say return as many rows as there are uh, objects within our contacts list, contact list array. Then what we want to do is we'll need to change this sum um, because remember all of the data that we return is being stored in our contact list array. Uh, so we'll just create a quick and dirty way to do this. It's just to create an NS dictionary to access the info in our array. And what we'll do here is we'll say NS dictionary. We'll just call it info. And we will set that to contact list 
object at index and we'll say index path dot row. So we'll say just set it to whatever objects at that particular row. Then we can set our cell dot text label dot text property to be info and then we'll say object for key. And in this case, the value, the key I'm returning is called contact underscore name. Now, if you use happen to use a different um, web service that returns a different set of JSON, obviously you'll want to change this key value to exactly what you are returning. In this case, if you are using the same URL that I am, which is this particular URL, you want to use this particular key value, which is object name. And then we just want to return the cell, and we are done here. We do have one last thing that we need to do. We'll need to jump back to our storyboard file. And let's jump onto our table view controller. I want to select the entire view controller, so just use this little button here. And if you jump over to the identity inspector, which is this particular inspector I'm currently looking at, so you might be on this one, uh, which is the attributes inspector. Uh, you want to switch over to the identity inspector. Notice that under custom class, this is just currently set into a placeholder of UI table view controller. Use the drop down and you want to select view controller. Okay, so the class that you created should appear here. And the reason it appears is because view controller is a subclass of UI table view controller. So that does conform to whatever we need, and we'll set that to UI uh, to view controller. Then what we want to do is let's also go ahead and expand our document window here. And I'm going to make some room for myself. I'm going to click in and select just the table view, right click it, and I'm going to create a new referencing outlet by dragging it to view controller. And that brings up the outlet that we've got available, which is my table view. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that as well. OK, with that done, let's do a Command S and Command R to build and run this application. And if we've done everything correctly, which I think we have, we should get a table view with a set of rows in it with data that is coming from our um, web service. And there we go. But again, the real magic, of course, here is not just that the data is being loaded from an external database but it is that we want to be able to add a contact and be able to refresh this table view without ever moving away from this view controller. So let me try and bring up the file that we were using. So I'm going to go back to this add contact page. I'll just reload it. So we start from scratch. And let's add another footballer, a uh, great player from France. To this list, I'm going to hit submit. And that gets added to our database. Let's jump back to our simulator. Notice uh, Frank Ribery does not appear here. But what we're going to do is use our refresh control, drag this down, wait for it to say it's updated, uh, which it was. And now we see Frank Ribery is now within our table view. So that's how you add a UI refresh control to a UI table view controller. Now, if you're working with a UI view controller with a table view in it, as opposed to a UI table view controller, then the process is a slightly different. Uh, but wherever possible, try and use a UI table view controller, and you should have no issues implementing this UI refresh control. Hope this was helpful, and we'll see you in another tutorial.